welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and an update on some of my latest painting projects. Um, the War of the Roses addiction um, continues, um, although it's slowed down a bit, it still continues. Um, and I'll show you a few units I've been working on on, the, on that uh, project. Um, first up, this is another uh, unit of Bill and Bo. Um, this is Baron John Neville. Um, who's part of the famous Neville family, um, who largely fought on the Yorkist side. But John was a bit of an um, outcast. don't know um, what the word is. Um, but he fought on the Lanc Lancastrian side for, for large parts of the war and wasn't necessarily trusted as a result of that. Um, but he did actually fight alongside one of the other generals I've been doing, Clifford, at the Battle of Ferrybridge, which was the precursor to Towton. Um, and I believe he died there, um, or in the subsequent battle, um, immediately after Ferrybridge. Um, so because I'm doing Clifford, I thought I'd do um, some of uh, Neville's troops to support him. Um, so this is a unit of um, you know, standard bow and bill, which is the sort of standard unit of household troops in the Hell Caesar rules that we're using. Um, not quite sure how many I'm going to do for, for Baron Neville because he's not particularly large, um, you know, not a particularly big um, lord. Of, um, he was very much a secondary lord, so I might just do might just do another unit of Bill and Bow and leave it at that, or I might just leave it at this one. So no, I don't know anyway, but it's just nice to have different flags. Um, and the fact that his men uh, fought alongside Clifford at Ferry Bridge gives me a perfect justification for doing this unit. So there you go, mixed bag of, uh, there's a few metals in there. I think um, I bought them on the on eBay, but I think they're actually front rank, um, uh, or sorry, first core, old first core figures. Um, and then there's a number of obviously Perry plastics as well. Um, yeah, really pleased with how it's come out. They His livery, as you can see, is from the flag is uh, red with a white cross. Um, so I've done predominantly red and white colours in the in the men at arms and oh sorry in the pil in the um, foot soldiers here. Um, some of them have got the tunics with crosses on, some haven't. But there's predominance of red and white just to sort of match it into that unit. So there you go. It's another one done. Another eighteen um, War of the Roses figures. So next up, um, turntable struggling with this lot because it's all metal. Um, this is a unit of uh, Yorkist Bill and Bow. Um, so I mentioned earlier in an earlier video that I'm planning to do some... Um, I mean, having Stanleys means they could fight on either side, um, but also I wanted to do some uh, distinct Lancastrian and like, distinct Yorkist troops. Um, not sure why I chose the Duke of Devon, um, who this unit is from. Um, I think I thought the, um, the the boar would be quite easy to do. Yeah, it, don't look too closely. Um, so anyway, the, this unit is all metal. It's all um, first core figures that uh, Sean uh, sent me um, as part of that package of uh, goodies that he sent out to actually all of us on the plastic crack, which was really generous of him. Um, and I said to him, well, you know, I have to do a unit in honour of you, um, and I. Uh, what, what do you want to be? And he said, well, obviously Yorkist. Um, so obviously Yorkist this unit has become. So um, yeah, I'll do a few units of York uh, troops. Nothing else it's useful to have uh, for games if I play solo in the future. Um, but nice to do, and nice to get these metals done. They're a bit shiny. Metal seems to shine a bit, um, but they'll, they'll dull down a bit in time. Um, so I'm very happy with how they've come out. And they've got uh, Devon's um, standard, which needs a little bit of touching up, I've just noticed, but we'll get there. So I mentioned my f theory that um, Devon would be a good one to do because the uniforms were easy to do or the livery was easy to do. Uh, and then I saw his personal banner, <laughs> which is this one. And it's like, oh my goodness me. Uh, but I had a hash at it, uh, literally hash at it actually on this guy's surcoat. So there is, um, that's uh, supposed to be the Duke of Devon there, um, or Earl of Devon. Um, this is a metal figure that I picked up on eBay. Um, it was actually a, a later period 
he had a big helmet with a crest on and everything and I I, I thought I just really liked the character of it, really characterful figure. Um, so I actually carved away the helmet, um, miraculously managed to do it without taking off a finger in the process, but carved into, this is metal, um, carved away and then uh, stuck in a, or cut the back end off a, a plastic helmet that I had spare and sort of put it in the crook of his arm there and sort of positioned it with a bit of... Um, uh, green stuff and what have you and I'm quite pleased with the result it's a I mean the mace he's holding is far too fantasy really um, but I just thought it was a bit of fun a bit of character I did like you know just, I think it was the head really that got me with this character he's got you know flowing locks and I just thought perfect I'll have him um, so that's one of the command my well, that's the command base for him um, as I say I'll do a few more units in time um, don't look too closely at the heraldry it's um Fairly, fairly basic. I mean, who'd have thought doing blue griffins was difficult? Hmm. Anyway, it's done. So I talked about Clifford earlier on um, and my sort of vision for Clifford because he was a border um, border lord up in Scotland or English side of the Scottish border. Um, he had all these troops that were renowned for being um, quite aggressive, very high quality um, um, but I thought I had this vision of because it's the border region, it's very much about skirmishing and raids and things like that. So I wanted his his force to be quite largely mounted or at least reaction a fast reacting force. So you've already seen in a previous video the uh, mounted longbow unit that I've done in his colours, um, and this one is um, uh, prickers, the scurriers, uh, light cavalry. Uh, that I've done his colours as well. Um, really pleased. This is uh, the Perry um, um, Light Cavalry box set, uh, all plastic. Um, I've mixed in this guy here. Um, he's in full armour. I think he's from the Night Box. A beauty, uh, and we talk about this a lot on the podcast, I know, but the beauty of these Perry sets is the the components are really easily interchangeable, and, and that's great fun. I'm I'm not a... You know, somebody who spends a lot of time adapting figures, but the fact I can just, you know, go, oh, I'll put those arms on this figure to create something a bit different and, and it isn't really an effort um, is brilliant. And I really enjoy that. There's a bit of dust there on that one. Um, a bit of mud, actually. Sorry, take that off. Um, so, yeah, it, it's um, it, it's been great fun doing that for this project for this very reason. And several of these figures. Um, I believe, if I remember rightly, um, came from the bits box, um, which is uh, which is always quite satisfying because then it's going to be truly unique. Well, likely to be very unique. Let's put it that way. So um, yeah, these will be Clifford Light Cavalry. Um, I've got some more Light Cavalry to do, and some, I might do some Mounted Knights in the um, in the Clifford colours um, just to continue the theme. Um, but there you go. That's that unit done, really pleased with it, came out beautifully. So next up, um, this is uh, a unit of Russian um, Napoleonic Apocheni troops, the militia. Um, the uh, I, think, I think this was the Moscow militia um, that basically were press ganged uh, into the army or came forward as a sort of religious zeal, more like actually, rather than press gang, uh, to repel, repel the uh, French invader. Um, inspired by the um, priests and what have you to, to do so um, and a lot of them didn't have weapons or didn't have muskets um, so a number of them would look like something out of the ancient times like these who had pikes now how much they actually played a part in the battle I, uh, battles that were fought I severely, severely doubt but uh, it's a fun unit to do um, and I thought I'd do it in honour of um, uh, Ken coming down to um, my club the other week and um, absolutely destroying everybody in sight with the Russian Opel Cheney. Um, he didn't fire very much with them because he just got stuck in. So I thought, well, that's no point having muskets then. We might as well give him guys with pike because he's never going to shoot. So he might as well just get stuck in. Um, so this is a battalion uh, deal from front rank, um, which are, so they're all metal. 
you get the the, the commander on the horse uh, or colonel on the horse as well in part of, as part of the 24 man figure well it's 24 if you count the horse and the fi and the cavalry man uh, or the rider as 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 two um but you put them in a battalion like this i think it looks absolutely really really good my only slight uh, upset really with this unit is the fact that uh, the poses of the run rank and file guys are, are identical uh, they're all standing there with the pike in their left hands for some reason i suppose they're going to grab it with their right and lower it that way that's probably why um and they're all exactly the same pose um which is a little bit galling so you've only, the only variety you've got is the dismounted officer and the mounted officer everybody else is the same so i've tried to bring the variety into the unit by having a multitude of different colors for their great coats so again a bit like i do with the winter guys um, there's some greens in there, blues in there, browns in there um, and by the time you've washed them and given them a bit of a, a light dry brush they sort of look like they should be together but when you look closely you can see they, they're not the same uh, I did the same with the bearskin uh, hats uh, a lot of browns but different types of browns uh, just to sort of show it in a different way and I think, I think it, it gives that effect of... Um, variety even though the figures are exactly the same so um as you can say i, I base them on sort of grassy um, effects because i'm doing two russian armies napoleonic armies at the moment well pretty much finished the winter one and that's ideally for skirmish type games so it's set up on individual bases uh, with the snow bases and then i'm doing a what i'm calling a summer one uh, which is basically non-winter um, figures based for black powder and that's what these are, are based for so um, that'll be a battalion of Apple Cheney which we'll see light of day at some point when we play some more black powder um, Napoleonics so I don't think I've shown these off um, on the channel I've shown them on um, when we're showing pictures of our works on the um, uh, plastic crack podcast on a Monday night um, but I, so I thought I'd show them on the video um, because they're a bit of fun. So these are um, teddy bear uh, Napoleonics. <laughs> so it's part of that package from Sean. Um, he sent a number of different things, but he sent um, these um, bears, uh, which were part of um, the front rank um, folklore when he was uh, um, uh, not front rank, first corps. It was part of first corps. Uh, folklore when he was uh, running the company um, they offered these for sale at different shows um, for people to take away for their kids um, and um, he had a number left over so he sent them over to me so I think he I think he thought it was funny that these are French ones uh, as well so um, knowing my love for the French uh, troops I like the French people very nice uh, I love their wine very much as well but um, I actually laugh, all well, the laugh is on him because I really enjoyed doing them. So there's the Napoleon bear um, and there's an old guard bear, uh, a proper old Grosner. Um, and they were just great fun to do. They're obviously quite big. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. They'll probably just sit on the, on the, on the, um, on a shelf somewhere in the gaming room when it's built. Um, and they'll have pride of place for that. So thanks for those, Sean. Um, I really enjoyed doing them, a bit of variety. Always, always, always enjoy having a bit of variety in what I'm painting. So there you go. That's them. So I've been inspired by um, Von Kettering. Fraser um, has been posting up uh, pictures of his um, carts and things he bought from Front Rank. Um, and I remember that I had a Gripping Beast cart set. Um, and I thought, you know what, you can never have too many of these things for accessorising. Um, and also I'm tinkering with an idea for a game for War of the Roses where this cart might be useful. Um, it's just a medieval cart. I think these are just peasants that I bought separately. The cart set is the hand cart and the, the horse-drawn cart. And you have different sides to it. There's um, sort of just, I guess it's a hay the other version is a hay cart, so it's just up there. Um, just sort of has struts pushing up to hold the hay in. I went with the hard, the hard-sided one. I don't know why, just did. Uh, I just noticed it's a little bit set a bit wonky. Well, it's rustic, isn't it? So, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, nice little metal figures. Um, easy to paint up. 
Um, just kept them to drab colours. I've used um, the Vallejo mud for the basing. Um, I tried to sort of cut tracks into it, but they haven't really come out terribly well. Um, but yeah, it's a terrain piece, really. Um, so I'm not going to get too worked up about it. But I think it comes out all right. Looks all right. Um, the horses are very, or the ponies are very shaggy, um, and. Um, you know they're just nice, nice little models. I, I do like the the peasants particularly, really good, um, really nice little figures. So a bit more out of the stash. And finally, um, this is a figure of uh, William the Bastard, William the First. Um, I can't remember where I got it from, um, to be absolutely honest. Um, but it's a nice little model, and uh, actually seeing um, Martin Seventh Son pulling together um, his Norman, for, well, his first crusade figures, I thought, well, I'll, maybe I'll do a few more of my um, Normans in Sicily project. So um, this guy can be uh, one of the um, uh, one of the commanders uh, for the army. I mean, you know, it's a bit of a come down for William the first, but, you know, I'm sure he'll, he'll bring forth his natural talents as a leader within the army when I play it. Um, yeah, I love the, the animation of the figure. Um, riding up, he's got a club, which was very much a, a Norman kind of uh, weapon. Um, the horse is rising up, obviously, which is really nice. Came with all sorts of struts, so I've cut them away. Um, but it seems to be fairly stable because it is a metal figure. Um, I use some of the Vallejo um, sand. Um, I think it's called Desert Basing. Uh, rather than the mud that I've been addicted to lately, and I quite like the effect it has. Um, and I got a couple of pebbles out of the garden, washed them and put them down um, in amongst it with some um, tufts and what have you. And I think, it's, yeah, it's come out all right. I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. So there you go. That's what I've been working on in the last uh, week or so. Um, usual good production, which is great. Um, getting through the stash, still adding to the stash, which isn't so good. Um, but um, enjoying the painting and getting through a bit of variety. Still persisting heavily with the War of the Roses, clearly, but um, coming towards the end of that project, I think, and sort of needing to get back into doing or needing, wanting to get back into some of the other uh, figures in my stash. And I'm sort of going to hankering after going back over some of the figures um, that I'm partially finished. Um, or some of the regiments are partially finished. I mentioned on the plastic crack the other night when uh, we were talking about motivation. I said, you know, when I get fed up with a range of figures uh, or fed up with painting a particular type of figure and just not feeling it, I, I park them, I put them back in a box and I leave them. And I'll come back to them at some point. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to do that with some of them. Uh, I know I've got some uh, American War of Independence figures that are half done. I've got a uh, Prussia, uh, a Russian uh, Napoleonic um, battalion half done um, don't even get me started with the wood elves that I need to get on and um, restart again um, so there's plenty to be done um, but um, yeah I think that's the thing just keep keep refreshing keep refreshing so there you go anyway I hope you're well I hope you're staying safe um, I hope your projects are, are going well and uh, I'll see you again soon this is Dom Signing out.